guys, how are you doing? My name is Lena and welcome to another video. I have been thinking about this for a while. <laughs> I wasn't going to post this because I saw Monica from Mooney Reads posting a similar video, but I decided to change it up a little bit. So I'm making this a beginner's sci-fi guide. It's only going to be just like super easy reads for getting you into sci-fi because I know that it's kind of daunting thinking of it if you have not read it. So I think this is going to be a great experiment. <laughs> Mostly including here either sci-fi books that are super easy to get into or YA sci-fi or kind of more mystery thriller sci-fi that is quite easy to get to. So you know we're keeping it fairly easy in this one. I'm also going to do a intermediate sci-fi guide and an advanced sci-fi guide. <laughs> That's going to be a hard one, but let's get started with this one. You're going to see fairly known titles in here, but also more kind of obscure titles, but yeah. We're going to start with the first one that is super, super well known, and this is The Illuminate Files by A.B. Kaufman and E. Christoph. This is book three, but I'm talking about the whole series. This is a super fun sci-fi that is actually told in mixed media, which thanks to this you're going to fly through it. I have to say that I enjoyed the first one more than the second one and I haven't read the third one yet, but if you've never read sci-fi I think this is a great place to start because it's not super focused on the science fiction elements but more in the characters so it's going to be super easy to get into it and also you won't have to be worried <laughs> about the whole sciences thing because in some science fiction books whew, super easy to get into super easy to read super fast paced it's almost non-stop action and yeah i think that this would be a great start and if you don't like mixed media i'll have some more recommendations for you, I promise. So, in LA, we are following two teenagers and they are living on this planet until one day two different corporations want to take over and they have to flee. Each of them are going on a different ship and something weird is starting to happen because one warship is following them and trying to take them down and apart from that, a plague erupts in one of the ships and <laughs> certain things into a really great mess, but yeah. I would highly recommend this one actually. I think that the first one is super super fun. Then I have here The Loneliest Girl in the Universe. I don't know if any of you have heard of this, but I read this book, I don't know, three or four years ago. This is a super super soft science fiction. I almost said fantasy. <laughs> super super low science fiction and I will say that it feels that way because it kind of feels like a contemporary but set on space. So we follow this girl, she's the only one awake in this ship that is going through this planet with kind of the rest of humanity to start over and she's the only one awake. So you follow her when things are starting to go weird in the ship and it's not a horror novel or for any means but it's just super entertaining. I will say that it's super easy. The beginning is a bit slower than the rest of the book, but once we reach the middle point, everything goes super fast. The main protagonist is actually quite nice to follow. She is a teenager basically, <laughs> but she has like a pretty good inner monologue, because I mean she's alone <laughs> pretty much the whole novel, although she is able to send messages to Earth but they have delayed because it's super far away but yeah this one is really good i highly recommend this one i haven't heard that many people talk about it but it's just super good then you have here one of the super obvious ones <laughs> also this is skyward by brandon sanderson this, this is book two starside but book one is just such a good fast paced science fiction read i mean it's brandon sanderson you know that his writing style is super direct and he also lays the whole story so well <laughs> and he's so precise that it's just super easy to follow. The whole cast of characters are super lovable and you will feel like pretty much at home reading this. I would recommend this to anyone the same way that I would recommend anyone who starts reading fantasy a random Sanderson book because it's just super easy to get into the story and you will be 
drawn to it and you will be trapped on it basically <laughs> because Sanderson does a great thing with endings his books always aimed up super super good so yeah i will highly recommend skyward it's just super fun and you know you have this kind of glossary in the back with the ships and stuff which is really handy in skyward we have the remnants of <laughs> the earth stuck in this planet that is basically surrounded by kind of trash <laughs> and they are being constantly attacked by this alien force that it gets through these cracks and attacks them. So we follow Spencer. Her dream has always been to become a pilot so she can actually prove that her father wasn't a coward because he was accused of fleeing battle and he was basically murdered <laughs> for her, you know, trying to leave. But yeah, this is super cool. And the whole flight academy setting is super, super interesting. And I was, I, I truly think that anyone could follow Skyward, Sky, Sky, Skyward, Skyward, Skyward. Another pretty obvious one is going to be Scythe by Neil Shusterman. This is more of a dystopian novel than a kind of pure sci-fi, like space sci-fi. But once we continue with the series, the sci-fi elements become more prominent on the novels, especially in the second and the third one. This first book is so good. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the Ark of the Scythe because it's just so well done. You are going to love the characters, you are going to be so invested in the story, especially in the second book. I will say that the first one just lay down everything for the next books in the series. But if you have read things like The Hunger Games or Divergent or anything like that, you will be totally comfortable reading Scythe. I mean, this is a super popular book and I wish everyone read this because it's so good. Oh, I will give her an adaptation of this one. On Scythe, we are on this futuristic Earth setting. Death is no longer a thing. To keep the population at bay, we have these dudes called Scythes that basically kill random people. <laughs> so we can have the population under control. And we are going to follow two Scythes apprentices that are so good. Oh my god. I want to read this to you so bad. The second book has the greatest cliffhanger ending that you're ever going to see. It's so good. I think this is the last obvious one that I have here. <laughs> but yeah, this is the Red Racing Trilogy by Pierce Brown. And I mean, almost everyone have or has already read this, but in case you haven't, <laughs> this is a more kind of a proper science fiction series. I will say that what it has in its favor is that it's just so fast pace and the setting of this whole Roman Empire inspiration thing is super great and super cool. I mean, it's not something that you see often, so I will say that that is everything. <laughs> I have to say that the first book is not my favorite because it reminded me so much of the Hunger Games. <laughs> but the second one is, I will say, a little bit more focused on the politics in the whole world and I really enjoyed it. But yeah, I will definitely recommend this series because it has a bit of everything. You have a gigantic massacre in the first one and, you know, some slow politics on the second one. Overall, I think that it's a fantastic series to get into sci-fi because it's not just like a dystopian, but you also have, you know, these warships and the whole colonization of the solar system. It's pretty great. It's pretty great. I have to say that everyone should read this just to give it a try. So in Red Racing, we follow Daryl. He lives in this super advanced world where the society is based around colors so red is actually the lowest one, lowest class and Zoos lived in Mars and he's trapped in these mines trying to terraform basically the planet but one day things go wrong and his wife is actually murdered and he decides that he's done by accepting everything so he's going to turn himself actually into gold and he's going to kind of act as a spy for the revolution that is trying to emerge on Mars, but yeah, it's super good. That is a pretty rough synopsis because so many things happen in the first book. It's just so, so fast-paced, but yeah, I think everyone should try this. Then take this one kind of with a grain of salt because I would say that this one is a bit more complicated 
that would be pretty as ones. But this is The Old Guard by John Scalzi. And John Scalzi is a really well-known author on sci-fi. But this series, I think it actually has five books. It's, I will say, a pretty soft entry into sci-fi because it's super short <laughs> and it's just like super, super fast paced. Even though it has just like more advanced subjects of science fiction, it's just like so centered and so fast <laughs> that you won't have time to just focus on it and you will be just like, oh, damn, yeah, bottle, another bottle, another bottle. Basically, in all men's world, we are set in this futuristic world where when you turn 65, you're actually eligible to join the military and actually no one knows what happens once you, once you join in. The only thing that they know is that they are at war with this alien race, but nothing else. And I will say it to that because this is so short, I think that it's 300 and something pages that, that lets you know the better because it's kind of filled with this little twist along the way that is really, really good. I thought that we are talking about more weird science fiction. I have here the SF Masterworks. I'm not just talking about The Lift of Haven, but this really short classic sci-fi, I would say that is a great point to start to read really short stories because even though there's kind of really chunky ones, these ones have this little premise and everything revolves around it, so they are super easy to get into it. Especially things like The Lake of Heaven, The Body Snatchers, uh, what else? The Penultimate Truth, they all have like this premise that you can read on the back and if you're interested on it, read it because they are going to be really easy to get to and they are always super short. <laughs> this one doesn't even have 200 pages. Yeah. This one basically follows this guy who is able to change reality through his dreams. Um, the penultimate truth follows a kind of civilization that is that is basically um, living on bunkers. And one day they basically discovered that there wasn't actually a war happening on the surface. So yeah, I'm going to leave it at there. And the body snatchers is about a alien invasion that is kind of substituting people in this small town. So yeah, as you can see, they are really, really buried. <laughs> what is the word I'm trying to say? There are so many different stories within this that I'm sure that you will find something that you will be interested on. Then I have here Six Wakes. This is more of a mystery, like a modern mystery type of novel, but set on a starship. So the mystery element really drops the story forward and it's not like it's slow by any means but it takes time to actually explain each character's past and in doing that it gets to introduce some things about the world because in this one we're going to follow this crew that suddenly wakes up and discover that they have all been murdered and their clones have been imprinted and they are now on their new clones so yeah Cloning is a thing <laughs> in this book, and I would say that it's implemented really well. Although I have one complaint, the writing style wasn't really for me. I don't know why, but it felt really dry <laughs> sometimes. But yeah, overall, I think that this one is just like super easy to get into. And you know, it just has those kind of sparkles of science fiction there, of more kind of complex science fiction. But yeah, super easy one. If you like murdering plants, <laughs> I have here Semiosis and this is more of a generational kind of story. We follow three different generations on this planet and I will say that that is the only thing that I didn't really like, but maybe you love this kind of generational shit, generational things, generational things. So perhaps it's just like the right book for you. We follow this crew landing in this new planet, trying to colonize it, and they suddenly discover that actually the plants in this world are intelligent and they are trying to kill them. But yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty weird story. But if you like the premise, I would say go for it. Because even though it's pretty weird, it's the kind of right weird. Then I have here Altered Carbon by Richard Morgan. 
and this is more of a again murder mystery sci-fi i won't say that the whole focus of outward heaven is the murder mystery but it's a fairly good chunk of it you can read this if you have read another book i want to start with this one if you have never read science fiction because it has like more advanced <laughs> subjects to it and more weird things to it but overall i think that it's a really easy read because it's just full with action and it's super fast paced the mystery is fairly good so i don't know if you think that you have like a nice control over <laughs> science fiction already i will definitely check this out and also the tv adaptation on netflix the first season, not the second one, because the second one is awful, but the first season is super good. So, in the world of Altered Carbon, that is kind of no longer a thing also, but not in the way of Scythe. No, because in here you have this thing on the back of your neck and you can basically store there your conscience and if you die and nothing happened to the thing, you can basically be re sleeve on another body and you can continue with your life. So, except that, we are going to follow Takeshi Kovacs. He was actually arrested and incarcerated, except for, for calling something, but he's actually been re sleeve because he's going to be forced to investigate the murder of this super rich guy that actually controls the entire city. Then I have here Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is actually another series with mixed media elements to it. I will highly recommend the audiobooks for these books because they are so... This is just such a fast-paced, action-packed science fiction. It's actually set in our world and oh, it's so good. You can also try and read a, the other book by Sylvain Nouvelle. It's called The Test. It's actually a really short novella that is just so good. <laughs> but focusing on Sleeping Giants, the whole mixed media things really push the story forward all the time. And you get really attached to these characters. They are so good. You follow, I think, four different characters on the first one. And it's just super amazing. Basically, on Sleeping Giants, we're going to follow Dr. Rose and when she was a child, she fell into this gigantic hole and landed on a gigantic metal hand. <laughs> so we're going to follow her years after that. She is trying to find more parts of this kind of gigantic robot, basically. And yeah, I will leave it at that because this story gets better after every kind of twist that you discover. And the first book is just so good. I'm going to make a quick note here. I was going to include The Expanse, but I don't think that the whole series is adequate for beginners in sci-fi. I would say that the first book is really good because it's more of a kind of noir detective story, but as the books progress, they kind of turn into the more intermediate sci-fi. So I will leave it at that and you do you. So the last two books that I want to talk about, well, not two books, there are actually four in this category. Are there four? <laughs> no, three, sorry. But I will recommend you Blake Crouch as an author. I mean, he does just like the greatest kind of low science fiction. Uh, the Wayward Pines trilogy is more of a dystopia kind of thing. We follow this FBI agent that wakes up in this kind of idyllic town but something where it's going on and then we have recursion which is actually more of a mystery kind of science fiction i will say that this one is the most science fiction <laughs> science fictiony of the other books but in this one we have this world where people are starting to experiment kind of new sets of memories through this disease that is spreading throughout the whole world and we have this guy investigating what is going on and then we have dark matter which i think is a great way to start with sci-fi because it has just like the perfect amount of science fiction elements combined with mystery thrillers so 
it's perfect. We basically follow this guy and he just has his perfect life. But one day he's going to the grocery shop and he's kidnapped by himself <laughs> and thrown into another reality. So yeah, it's a pretty weird one, but it's just super good. I would highly recommend Dark Matter. And then the last one is, of course, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. I definitely think that this book is actually for everyone. It's more like the loneliest girl in the universe, kind of a contemporary but set in space. And the, and the relationships between the members of the crew are so good. <laughs> it's not a very plot-driven book, it's more of a really character-driven book. So I would think that if you like any of the characters, you are Good to go and you would enjoy this so so much but yeah those were basically all my recommendations there are a, quite a few of them i thought there were less <laughs> i think that i'm not forgetting anything but yeah i will do the intermediate science fiction list next month but yeah let me know if you actually check any of these books because i would love for more people to read sci-fi i know that it feels kind of daunting <laughs> and it's if you have never read any of it, it I mean, it's kind of intimidating, intimidating, but once you get started, you won't be able to solve. So yeah, that's going to be all for today. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye!